Watch Tracks and TV right now. Mihar mo nun ang Dimensional Commentary 1. Keep watching Transit TV and stare more for premium content. Otra vez, adios. The quality of player that Pep has at his disposal right now is not the same. It's nowhere close what, to what he has been having. Sevinho and Doku don't look to me like they're serious players. I know people are deceived with their flicks and tricks, but they don't look. They don't have end product. And uh, yes, they don't have end product. They don't. And... Transit TV, welcome back again. March day four of the Champions League. If you don't know, is a, a revised a group stages this season by UEFA. Teams are going to play eight games, not just eight games in the group stage, but it's not going to be home and away. You know, you probably will win, meet some the team just once during the group stage. You go four games away from home and four at home. And today was the first. Day one of uh, match day four of the group stage, and it turned out to be a game of fours. So many teams winning by four goals. Some very interesting and exciting results came in today, and uh, you see Liverpool, of course, winning at home against uh, Liverpool. Of all people, four goals to zero. Another team, PSV, beat Girona 4-0. Dynamo Zagreb beat Slovan 4-1. It's no longer news. Liverpool, uh, Manchester City lost 4-1 away to Sporting. Real Madrid lost today 3-1. Yes, very interesting results. And they were going to give you a little bit of roundup of this one today, starting with uh, Liverpool at Anfield. Who has continued? Who have continued their solid run to the beginning of the reign of Anna Slot at the Anfield, scoring goals with uh, reckless abandon and uh, looking very solid, even defensively. Difficult to be considered the least goal in EPL this season so far, and this is one of the differences between them and uh, between Anna Slot, Liverpool, and uh, Georgian Club because Anna Slot is more of on the conservative side. Slow build up, very tactical arrangementary, and uh, a little bit uh, kind of uh, slow compared to the pace at which and intense Liverpool we are playing on that club. And this has proven to be very effective. I remember I used to criticize club because of the kind of intensity and energy at which his team was playing. I was always saying that it's not going to be easy to sustain that kind of intensity over the years or season. And an slot has come in and kind of adjusted that a little bit. And Liverpool are uh, scoring goals and winning teams, top of the Premier League, and doing well in Europe as well. But for this game, a little bit of talking points. First of all, Mohamed Salah has proven and shown to be a very key player for Liverpool. And Liverpool need to do something. You know, over the uh, transfer window, he almost left to Saudi Arabia, and right now he's, he'll be free at the end of the season. Looks very, very, it's looking inevitable that Salah will be leaving Liverpool. And I don't know what they're going to do because if he's not scoring, he's creating goals. Today he's created two assists one for Diaz, who got two goals, and one for Gabo, who as well got two goals. Another case in point would be Graven Bird, who has become a very massive revelation this season. One of the best, if not the best midfielders right now in terms of the ones that are, uh, that are fit. Of course, you know Rodgers is out, of, out so far, probably be out of the season. Raymond Bosch was is still in that midfield for Liverpool today. And Van Dijk looks like it, uh, he has come back to his best of forms. So it's, very, it's going to be very difficult this season to win against Liverpool. They showed Liverpool by any means is not a team a pushover. You will remember they played the finals of the UEFA Cup last season and won the, the German league uh unbeaten. Very, very tough team to beat. And they were also tough today, well organized and Liverpool could not bring them down early enough in the game, but when the goals started coming, they just poured like uh of course, Liverpool is not a defensive team, so once they consider that goal, you always knew that they're going to come out, which they did. 
and Liverpool exploited those gaps and scored their goals. And uh, yes, that's how that one went today. And uh, Javi had no answer to an onslaught tactics today, especially for the fact that this happened in the second, mostly in the second half. He could, he did not have time to rearrange his team, and they could not find their bearing. I mean, that this one ended the uh, four goals to zero. The second game to look at today will be Real Madrid, and it, it, I just want to touch on two things on uh, Don Carlo and Luka Modric. He, people and this has been coming, you know. But is that Real Madrid have been winning games coming from behind? People call it Champions mentality. But if you really, really look, sit down and watch their games, even since last season, even though they, even though they won the Champions League last season, you could see those cracks there. And I was telling some of my Real Madrid fans that if you're still relying on 39 year old Luka Modric and last season Cruz to win games then it, there is really a big problem in Real Madrid. And in order to, to solve those problems, they went and got Mbappe. I also remember telling my friends that Mbappe is going to be a problem for Real Madrid. It's going to affect the balance of that team. Because you already have the uh, Vinicius Junior, you have Rodrigo, you have Verde, and you're bringing Mbappe to that attack. First of all, Mbappe is a man on a mission. He needs to prove himself. He wants to win Ballon d'Or, so it's all about him on this transfer. Since his junior is on the brink as well of being a superstar, he also wants to make his own name. Rodrigo, we know, is a confident player and does his own things too. So it's going to be a little bit of a and Jude Bellingham as well, though he's supposed to be a central midfielder, he's also chasing his own personal honors. You remember the, he was second in the, the rankings for Ballon d'Or this season. So he was, he's always going to be a problem. Yeah, he, he, he's not sure. It looks like they're playing together, but the balance of what these players bring to the team is going to be lacking. And when this happens, and you learn on that nine-year-old Rod, uh, Modric in the midfield to hold that midfield for you, it's always going to be too much work for Kamavinga or Germany. And this is what we have seen in Real Madrid this season. Don Carlo needs to address this problem. When the the, the, he got really very bad. He involved the uh, Danny Sabayos. If Danny Sabayos is good enough to come in when things went bad, why didn't he start the game? You need those energy. You need that energy. Uh, Luka Modric, respectfully, I am a personal fan of him, even when he was in Tottenham. But I don't think he has it anymore. I thought by the end of last season, Madrid would have let him go and start to rebuild. So it's a problem for Real Madrid and it's going to continue to be a problem. And another part of it would be Don Carlo. He, yes, he's a coach that allows players to express themselves. But sometimes too, you need to be a little bit strict to how you want, how you want the game to be played. And as well, him feeling, maintain that the other team was completely need any more players. Also could be the bane of their problem right now. I have always known that Real Madrid had a problem in the midfield. Cruz, a player has Cruz started leaving and Camon is, you know, going down in age and energy. It, it, it's, it's, who is going to replace them? Who do you have? There needs to be... so. The, and the players you brought, you brought in Mbappe, who is not going to help you? This is junior, he's not a defensive winger. He's not a player that's going to come back and help you in the midfield. He wants to run at, run at defenders. He wants to create goals. So it's always going to be a problem. The balance of Real Madrid. You remember just last week here, Barcelona decimated them and tore them apart. Today again, you know, he, the same thing happened. So it's really the question now for Real Madrid fans out there. Has Don Carlo long run out of ideas? Is it a time to change the uh, Management at Real Madrid and the Panembois bring in maybe a younger coach who is vibrant and more flexible tactically. It, it looks like uh, Don Carlo's time is up at the Panembois. Real Madrid fans, right there in the comment section, let me know what you think. Do you think Madrid should go ahead and look for a different coach to stay at his at the Panembois? Then uh, another game to talk about today is uh, Manchester City. When we say there are one or two players that will leave a team 
and things will look bad. People think, no, build a squad. If you have a squad of players, no, there's always going to be a squad. There's always going to be those players, one or two, that hold the team together. And that's what I was seeing in Manchester City today. Can it be, to an extent, but to a large extent, Roger, being injured and out is a big, massive problem for Manchester City. They have not found answers to that absence and is a problem. Though today, they started this game very well, holding, uh, sporting, strangling them the first uh, half, scoring the, inside the first four minutes. Uh, this is the best I've seen of Foden so far this season. Though he missed our chances, and uh, Haaland as well did not take his chances. He, but still, he was just not good enough for City. You remember they lost last weekend against Beaumont. I'm saying against Beaumont. Today, Sporting Lisbon is not a team I'm sure will make tough for in England if they were to play in England. City conceding four goals against them today. And there was Arsenal written all over this one. You remember, Jokares is a player that Arsenal was linked to over the summer and still being linked to, to for January transfer. So it, it was always going to be a few days for Arsenal fans. And know they enjoyed this one and really enjoyed it really good. But there's something I want to talk about yet again in this city team. I've always said this. Manchester City defenders are not players that like to defend 1v1. If you play against Manchester City and you are brave enough to attack them and move the ball fast enough to isolate their defenders against your wingers or strikers, they, they always concede. City don't have very good defenders. For me, the best defender in that team right now is Nathan Ake, and he's just coming back from injury. The other rest of them are players that want to play football. They don't really want to defend. And because City are always on the front foot, they're not exposed enough to def defend. And today, in the second half, after what happened in the first half, Sporting threw wins to caution, threw caution to wins, and they uh, went at City, attacked them like the team that was playing at home, and got their goals, penalty, and... Uh, I don't know who is to blame as I think City also have to blame themselves in this one because they had chances to score goals in the first half and they had missing a penalty. And once that happened, Sporting came to life and uh, and then I let the City today. I got their goals and City lost this game in a four one. You can score in a hat trick and showcasing himself out there. And what makes it interesting again is Amorin. He's going to be about his, I think it should be his last game before he joins Manchester United. What a way to send yourself off and join a, the league that Manchester City is, is on top of because they are the running champions, winning four times in a row and still favorites, favorites to win to win this season. You know, So yeah, uh, it's really, a, Manchester City are not looking like the city that we saw last season. And Pep needs to find answers to this one. Otherwise, this, this season is not looking good for them. I know they don't have a reputation of starting their seasons very well until January. But the way it's going, the, the gaps are, are showing up. And it's really, really showing up. Another talking point for Manchester City that I saw today, and I've been saying it for some weeks now, that the quality of players that Pep has at the disposal right now, is not the same. It's not we are close what to what he has been having. Sevinho and Doku don't look to me like they're serious players. I know people are deceived with their flicks and tricks, but they don't look. They don't have end product. And uh, yes, they don't have end product. They don't. And Pep has a lot of work to do to sort out this city team if they are to win anything this season. And uh, yeah, they, I will just give you the remain of the other results. That came in today for depending on what your interest is in Europe. Day four, you have uh, PSV winning at home to Girona 4 0. Slovan and Danoma Zagreb winning them 4 1 away from home. Monaco winning away from home to against Bologna. Dortmund winning 1 0 to Stormgrass. Celtic 3. 
I'll be Leipzig. This team, I don't even understand where to place Leipzig. Sometimes the agile killers, the other time they just dis dis disappear. They lost three, one, three to Celtic. Lille played a, out a 1 1 draw against Juventus, and Liverpool, of course, beat Bayern Leverkusen 4 0. Real Madrid losing at home to AC Milan 3 1. And Morata scoring in that one. And they, of course, the last of them sporting beating Manchester City at home 4 goals to 1. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think time is up for Don Carlo at the Bernabeu? Do you feel that Manchester City has a big problem? Are they going to win this season? What do you think is a problem with Manos Rodri? Is, what do you think Manchester City is out there? Fans out there, let me know what you think Pep needs to do to solve this problem because they are conceding goals, losing games and drawing, dropping points and not looking good at all this season. And for Liverpool fans, I know you guys don't want to hit to talk about it, you don't want to hear it. Is this season the season for Liverpool? Let me know what you think in the comment section and I will see you again tomorrow.